Hi everyone, welcome to another video created by me, Zong Ta. Today's Autodesk screencast focuses on some of the new features of Revit 2017. This will be one of many videos, so be on the lookout for additional videos in this series. Enjoy! Here I am in Revit 2017, and one of the new features I'd like to showcase is the Formant 360 Converter plugin. When you install Revit 2017, if you head over to the Add-ins tab of the ribbon, you'll notice there is a Format 360's converter panel. In here, you have Convert RFA to Format 360, which is the default command, but if you expand it, you'll see there are other options as well. So the first one is being able to take all of your family files that you specify and convert them to a Format 360 file for use in Autodesk Format 360. You also have the ability to convert any SketchUp files that you might have downloaded from Google SketchUp um, repository, if you will, to Format 360. You can also import a Format 360 model <coughs> into Revit. And then you can reload any families that you need, in other words, uh, converting and making them back to the original families. So for example, here I am in Revit 2017, I have a model open. If I start the first one that says Convert RFA to Format 360, it'll pop up a window that says what is the source path location of where your Revit files are and where are you wanting to place the converted Revit family files. So you can browse to the location that you need. And for example, here I put it under Demos under 2017 under Revit and I put it under Revit family files and then converted files where you want to place them you put them in that correct subfolder that you want so for example you have put it into format 360 converted files if you need to you can upload that data to your A360 drive content folder online as well you can click OK and the conversion will go through you won't see any kind of visual indication to see that it's finished in the Revit screen. But if, for example, I open up Windows Explorer and we take a quick look at those two subfolders, <clears throat> you'll see here under Revit Family Files is a list of family files that are .rfa that I'm having to convert into the Format 360 converted files, which are .axmf files. Now, real quick, this was all with the, an understanding and assumption that most people understand what is Format 360. For those of you who are not aware of what Autodesk Format 360 is, it is the ability for you to download and install an app or use it directly online. It is a software Autodesk created to compete against Google SketchUp. It's an environment that allows you to graphically um, and very easily manipulate objects and create objects. Um, and really just kind of take control of the form work, if you will, um, and make it as iterative as you need to. So depending on what you're trying to achieve and how you're trying to adjust and tweak the model and the objects, you can do some very nice massing, if you will, of the project and try to get an understanding of relationships of solids to voids and circulation and things like that. So this is Autodesk Format 360. Uh, I'll try when I have time to create a video screencast on the basics of Autodesk Format 360. The next feature I'd like to showcase for Revit 2017 is this new product called Autodesk Insight 360. Let's open up a file. <coughs> Let's pick <laughs> You know what? We'll just start with a brand new file. That's fine. And let's say we build uh, a basic building, nothing fancy. In the analyze tab of the ribbon you'll notice there's a new panel called Insight 360. In here, 
you can tell the software to create the insight model and it's going to basically help you with creating a new energy model with the ability to look at the data in a new interface if I click insight 360 it'll open up the browser Let's give it a second What this will do is it'll get you to Autodesk Insight 360. It'll automatically log you in if you've already logged into your Autodesk account. And you can select and look at any particular model you might have already created. For example, here, you're going to see a model that I created earlier. It shows you all of the usage um, and the model itself. You can obviously uh, click and rotate and take a look at the model. You can explode the model, you can look at the metadata of the content, but more importantly, um, you can scroll down and you can start to take a look at benchmark comparisons, the model history, the orientation of the model in respect to the planet, um, all of the different walls and directions and settings that you've got, glass, infiltration, roof construction. So this is a very fast, new, easy way to understand the data, if you will, of your energy model. So that's Autodesk Insight 360. And then the last uh, I'd like to take a look at for this video is the um, what they call global parameters. So let's open up a file. <clears throat> and so for the most part, everybody knows what a parameter is. It's just uh, an intelligent piece of uh, BIM data that you attribute to the model to do certain things or to provide data. Uh, for example, a bed um, here has BIM data as to you know what level it's on, what marks, so on and so forth. You can look at the type property information of that object and you can see all the BIM data such as the length parameter or the width parameter as well of this object. Global parameters <coughs> are located under the Manage tab of the ribbon under settings and you see global parameters. Global parameters allows you to create a general parameter to set up as a relationship to other parameters. For example, <clears throat> over here you've got some doors that are set uh, at a specific distance away from the corner of the rooms and if I set up a basic relationship now, say an 8 inch um, dimension and it's being locked at 8 inches that basically means that if I take this wall and I move this wall that relationship holds which is fine and dandy for most things but what if you want to set it up such that that parameter is a general parameter that you can control in the project environment here I have one created already called the door jam so if I go back to global parameters I have a door jam inset parameter I created that sets it at a foot if I change this value to say 6 inches and I hit OK, you'll notice that these doors and these doors automatically have adjusted at one shot. I don't have to worry about <coughs> manually moving a wall or manually moving each door right off the bat. You can change how the data is displayed on a global parameter by selecting it and you can see it says a label is here. You can click show label in view and it will display the data. Another possible use and function of global parameters is say for example you have global parameters that set up the depth of the room and the depth of the hallway if you will in relationship to the depth of the building. And if we go back to global parameters you'll see things such as the formula that's used for the room depth is actually based upon the building depth and the half width depth if you will. So these are global parameters that you can create new ones, you can modify what you've got to work with, and they're very similar to just generic family parameters that you create or project parameters that you create. And so those are a few additional new features in Revit 2017. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to uh, hear from you guys again on the next series of What's New in Revit 2017.